So you can be working out, working out, working out and not see results. And that's because your nutrition is not together. So I don't know if if I'm going to be great over here on Instagram because it keeps saying that I'm having a bad connection. And you all are not talking. So I don't know if you all can see me over here. Let me know if the connection is good or bad so that I know if I should keep going. Hello, Facebook. What's going on? Welcome. We're going to have a nutrition talk. And so I'm also live over here on Instagram and I'm trying to see if my connection is good, but I want to have a nutrition talk and I'm waiting on them to tell me if, okay, looks like we got a question. Cool. All right. Cool. So that means my connection is good. So this is the first question. What, let's put that up there. What's the best food to eat to lose stomach fat? Okay. So let's talk stomach fat because that's a question that I get all of the time. You can see me. It's clear over here. Awesome. So a question that I get y'all all of the time, and I'm going to move this one over here. So it doesn't look like I'm looking at two different things. Okay, cool. So a question that I get all the time is how can I lose my stomach? Okay. I get that question all the time. How can I lose my stomach? How can I lose my stomach? <sighs> stomach fat, guys, is one of those things that one, you're going to have to eat around the clock okay every two to three hours so a lot of times no first let me go back so you can't hear me uh can you hear me now tahisha can you hear me now over here tahisha What's going on, Instagram? I'm trying to make sure that everybody can see and hear me before I get into this question about what's the best foods to eat to lose stomach fat. You still can't hear me? Is there anybody else having that problem? Frederick, you said you could see me and it was clear. Are you having that? Okay. They hear and see me over here on Instagram. Uh, Facebook, can y'all hear me or see me? Are y'all having an issue with hearing and seeing? Before I move into this question. They saying on Instagram they can hear me. Okay, they okay, audio. It must be your phone, Tahisha, because they're saying audio is good. Okay, so what's the best uh food to eat for your stomach fat? Stomach fat, okay, we must start here. A good detox. Alright. So it's not certain foods that is going to um, make you lose your stomach is certain things that you want to have to do. Okay. So when I first started on my journey, I had a stomach because I had just had a baby. Okay. So some of the things, um, that I had to start doing was to detox because if you're not going to the bathroom at least three times a day, I go to the bathroom after every meal. Y'all literally, I go to the bathroom about three times a day. And if you're not going to the bathroom, um, at least three times a day, then you've got a buildup of waste, okay? Shit, you need to go to the bathroom. All that's built up. And that is the reason why a lot of people have a midsection because they don't go to the bathroom regular, okay? So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you are detoxing. Just like you have to change the oil in your car, you have to detox, you have to go to the bathroom, okay? So, of course, y'all know I'm CBD, CBD queen. So, the, I've done a lot of different detoxes. I did Abacare. I sold, um, I don't even know what it was called, Unicity. I've done a lot of different detoxes with Singulair. And none of them have sent me to the bathroom the way CBDT with TLC has. It's just that simple. I used to have to take magnesium siltrate and um, magnesium siltrate have you at the bathroom at all times. Like you have to stay at the bathroom. And don't nobody have time to be drinking it. And that was just basically water that was coming out of me. So, left that alone. And once I started to use the CBD tea, we got lemon, we got raspberry, we got regular tea for those that don't want the CBD or cannot have the CBD. Okay? So, you need a good detox so that you can flush yourself out. Most of my clients who have done a detox, period have lost their midsection, okay? That's the first thing. So we need to start getting regular, going to the bathroom at least three times a day, okay? And then another way to get your stomach down, you need to be eating every two to three hours, okay? Um, 
um, eating every two to three hours, y'all, because what happens is when you deprive yourself, okay, your body is like, I don't know when the next time I'm going to eat. So your body feeds off of the fat that's stored and stores more. So that's why you end up getting this midsection, okay? Because your body is feeding off of that fat and storing more fat. But if you're eating every two to three hours, now your body is going to start to um, burn that food for energy, okay? And you're going to start to have more energy because a lot of times you sluggish because you got a lot of waste in your midsection, a lot of toxins from the food you eat from the medicines you take is lodged in your intestines and it's making you tired and it's making your, you know, face break out and things of that nature. So another way for your stomach to go down is to make sure that you're eating every two to three hours so that your body can start to burn that um, fat and use it for energy. Okay. Um, water is another thing that you should be doing um, to help your stomach go down. Water is a natural detox, y'all. And water is that energy first thing in the morning. Water is going to activate that tea. Thank you, Gerald. Welcome, Gerald. How you doing, Gerald? <laughs> water is that thing that is going to um, flush it out. Okay, so if I drink water first thing in the morning, it activ activates that tea, and then I'm going to the bathroom just like that. Water first thing in the morning also will serve as a cup of coffee. Okay, so even though, like I said, I'm a coffee drinker, but now with the company, I've got we've got Latin coffee, and I do the chaga, and that's what I'm drinking here. But my coffee it doesn't have all that added sugar and stuff. But water also is like coffee first thing in the morning. If you drink it, it's going to give you that energy, and it's also going to help to flush that stuff out of your midsection. Okay, the next thing. Another thing that you need to cut out would be like breads and pastas, watching your alcohol, um, different types of alcohol, your margaritas and stuff like that, your beers, which your yeast and stuff like that is going to cause you to have a midsection, okay? So watch your alcohol intake, your carb intake, your pastas, your rice. Like when I eat too much rice, I'm bloated. That's why my stomach, you know, might be bloated one day and might not be the next day because I drink my tea flush it on out okay but most of the ladies that come to me when i cut the rice and the pasta out of their diet now their stomach starts to go down it's normally always the first thing to go down because the reason why you had that midsection is because you have a lot of buildup of waste okay shit so whole grain stuff yeah like um chickpea pasta zucchini pasta stuff like that but if you're one of those ladies where you know that your weight goes to your midsection or your weight goes to your thighs or whatever even guys i would just stay away from it because a lot of those like even whole food options or vegetable options like i had one girl she was doing the zucchini pasta but she was carb sensitive so it was still giving her a stomach once she cut out the zucchini pasta and things of that nature her stomach went down so some people are carb sensitive and they can't even have those vegetable pastas and that cauliflower rice and things of that nature so and then another reason why a lot of people, um, even with eating those options, don't lose their midsection because we're not weighing our food. So you all have to make sure that you are weighing and measuring your food. You just can't be like, okay, I'm going to eat a bowl of rice. I'm going to eat a bowl of pasta. Like when you look at how much you're supposed to be eating, you really only supposed to have about a fourth a cup of rice, okay? And about, you know, maybe like four ounces of that pasta. So when you cut down your serving sizes, that makes a difference too because everything in moderation. I love, you know, pastas and I love breads and I love all that type of stuff, but everything in moderation. Like for my clients who come to me who um, have a bread obsession, I know that that bread is causing them to have a midsection, but instead of me asking them to go cold turkey, I switch them over to Ezekiel bread, okay? So Ezekiel bread is a flourless bread. Lavish bread, those are going to be your good options if you're trying to wean yourself off of bread. But to bring me back to my, the main question was, um, what are the best foods to eat to lose stomach fat? It's really what you're doing. You've got to detox. You've got to cut the act, some of the alcohol down, all the sugar and the stuff from the um, beers. you got to cut that bread, pastas, your processed sugar. All of that stuff is adding to your midsection. So it's not certain foods that is going to make your stomach go down. It's the things that you're going to have to cut out and the things you're going to have to do. More cardio. You know, if you're not doing um, cardio, wrap your stomach up, you know, and do your cardio. Make sure that you're getting in the fat burning zone. 
that stuff that we talked about on yesterday. Find out the formula, whatever your um, target heart rate is, then that's where you need to stay. Because a lot of times when you all are doing cardio, you're not maximizing your time in cardio. You're doing an hour of cardio, but you only burn 200 calories. Like that's in an hour, you should have burned at least like six to 800 calories. So you got to maximize your time. So for me, that's why I go hard with my workouts because... If I was just kind of basically doing the workout just to show you all how to do it at 11 a.m. when we do it Monday through Friday, then I would not get into my target heart rate. So my target heart rate is about 145. So in order for me to be really maximizing the workout and the cardio, I have to get my heart rate up into 145. So And I have to stay there so that I can maximize that workout. So those are things that you all need to pay attention to in your workouts and your cardio and then Get you a, a good waist trainer. Put you some alleviate cream on your stomach. Okay, rub this on your belly and um, put your waist trainer on and sweat that fat out. So I did, you know, at first I used to think that waist training was like a waste of time. I was like, this stuff don't work, you know, because I had abs just like that. But the more I got into my journey, you know, I started waist training. And I started seeing a big difference with the waist training. So, you know, waist training does work. So I always rub the alleviate cream on my belly, okay, and put my waist trainer on. So this also will help you sweating off that fat around the belly, okay? Another one um, that will help with that belly fat is gonna be our resolution drops. This is called lipo in a bottle, okay? And so with the resolution drops, you take a couple drops of these under your tongue, 30 minutes before your meal, okay? And it's gonna help, help you to not overeat, to not snack bad. It's going to really attack that belly fat as well. So this is a big one for me that I've been using during quarantine, because I told y'all, we're not coming out of quarantine looking like Big Deborah. So even though I eat the foods and I do the workouts and stuff like that, I still need the resolution drops because I'm not moving and shaking as much as I was before quarantine. So I put a couple drops of this into my smoothie, under my tongue, you know, 30 minutes before my meals. And this right here, like I said, is life on the bottom because we're not coming out looking like Big Debra. Um, is, were you trying to say sweet potatoes good? If you're asking about any of the products, you can um, click the link in my bio to purchase products. But sweet potatoes are good. Again, when it comes to any potatoes, I like to do the red potatoes, okay? When it comes to potatoes, it's all about the size that you're doing. So we're not going to go and get a big, huge sweet potato and then put butter and all that type of stuff in it. Get you, um, that's right, no big devil. Get you a um, a half of the size, okay, and then put some cinnamon on it, okay? So sweet potatoes are fine, but you just want to watch your carb intake. So if you know that you're going to do a sweet potato that day, then don't do the oatmeal and the rice that day. So I tell people don't do oatmeal in the morning with your eggs plus a sweet potato at lunch plus rice in the afternoon that's too much choose one okay but for me sweet potatoes does not work for me anymore i like to do like the red potatoes okay yes use cinnamon instead we're not coming out of this looking like big deborah okay um so what other questions y'all got give me some more questions Like I said, we did this nutrition talk on yesterday, but the video got deleted. Instagram be tripping, like Instagram tripping right now. Every few seconds it's saying that the connection is bad. So that's why I was like, let me go live on Facebook too. I ain't got time. Okay, so some things that we talked about yesterday was about being vegan and some vegan options. Um, our peaches, okay. Yeah, peaches are good. Um, if you want to stay away from... I don't understand the question. How do you burn the talk? Okay, just DM me and I'll send you the link to purchase the products. Um, okay, I see your question. Um, as far as your fruits, you want to stay away from things like, um, pineapples, bananas, and grapes. Those are going to be your highest in fat, I mean, highest in sugar, um, fruits, okay? Because a lot of people think that just because you eat fruit, that is fine. That is not the case, okay? 
some fruits are higher in sugar. And if you are snacking on just fruit, then that is going to act just as like you might as well have went and ate some cookies or some pie. Okay, so you still have to watch it because fruit is considered a carb and you have certain fruits that are high in sugar. So some people with their protein shakes, you're trying to lose weight, but you're putting banana in your shakes. You're putting oat, um, peanut butter in your shakes. Those are things that I had to cut out when I was trying to lose weight. Okay, so your better fruits are going to be strawberries, blueberries, raspberries. Those um, berries do not... <laughs> Big Deborah, I am tickled. Those um, uh, those fruits, the berries, okay, they do not have all of the carbs. They're very low, very, very low. Like, I don't even know, one or two carbs. They're very low in carbs and sugars, okay? And so those are going to be your better fruits to add to your um smoothie apples um you know you can add your spinach and things of that nature so that you can get your greens pineapples yeah i just do everything in moderation okay so don't just snack on fruit all day if you're going to put fruit into your smoothie make sure you balance it out and have a good protein i personally use the matrix it is our 100 percent vegan protein powder and you all know that i have been vegan since january so for me the matrix works amazing okay and i mix that up with my superfood superfood contains 300 milligrams of cbd and i add my strawberries i add my local honey and i add um sometimes i add some chaga to it i add some of the resolution drops so that once i finish my smoothie i don't overeat okay um and then, what else do I add? I think that's about it. Some people like to add, like I said, spinach, kale, celery, you know, add all those different types of things. Like, do your research on the different types of foods. So, if you know that you got low iron, research the type of foods that give you, um, that are high in um, iron-rich properties, okay, so that you can add those to your smoothies and have everything that you need. So whatever your goal is, whatever you need, you need more B6 and more B12. Look up things that you can do. Like we have um, the light drops. So in addition to me eating my greens and stuff, I make sure that I take my light drops because again, I am vegan. So there's a lot of things that I'm not getting in. I have to make sure that I get in my energy that I need and my vitamins throughout the day. So a lot of it is research as well, okay? But just watch your different types of fruits and make sure that when you're eating fruit as a snack that you're pairing it with something like some tuna or some salmon, some chicken. Like you always got to pair it. And I'll go over the rules in a second, but you always want to pair a protein with a carb, okay? Let your snacks be about 90 to 100 calories. Let your meals be about, you know, 200 to 300 calories. So if you learn how to be a labor reader and watch your calories and weigh your food, then you're gonna reach your goal. So let me see what some of the other questions were. Um, oh yeah, like if you love peanut butter, add the powder peanut butter or add some almond butter, okay? What I do is I make my smoothies with um, cashew milk and then you can add some powder PB or you can add some almond butter. But stay away from the peanut butter. I love peanut butter. Peanut butter has my heart. But I had to cut it when I was trying to get past that healthy weight loss goal into that next area. So when I was ready to like start ripping up and seeing abs and stuff, I had to cut the peanut butter out. And I had to cut the yogurt out. I was doing a lot of yogurt just because it was supposed to be like high in protein. But y'all, that yogurt was keeping me at a standstill. So yogurt, even the non-dairy yogurt is packed with a lot of sugar. If you look on the back of that silk yogurt, it's got too much sugar for that small container. Okay. Um, oatmeal. Honey. Okay. So for those of you who love oatmeal, all right. Make sure that you're not doing a whole huge bowl of oatmeal. If you're trying to lose weight, I would tell you to cut that oatmeal in half and just have a little bit of that oatmeal to satisfy you. But if you're doing it with the instant packs, I would not do a full pack. If you're doing it with the old-fashioned, make sure you're doing like a full of a cup. You know what I'm saying? Like cut your carbs down if you're trying to lose weight, okay? So for like I said, for those oatmeal lovers, 
oatmeal by itself in the morning is not going to kick it, okay? If you're trying to lose weight and you're wondering why and you're eating oatmeal every morning by itself, that's going to be one of the reasons why. You have got to pair something with that. So pair some eggs, scramble, omelet, over easy, boiled, whatever you want. Add something with it, some chicken, something, okay? I used to do ground turkey in the morning with my oatmeal. But you need to pair a protein with a carb. Those two need to be able to balance themselves out, okay? So if you're really trying to lose some weight, I would say try to wean yourself down where you're only doing oatmeal a couple times a week. I'm just saying what works for my body and what I know works for a lot of my clients who have lost weight. I'll, if you ask any of my clients who follow my plan to the T, those who have been with me, they lose no less than 50 pounds in the first 90 days because we're cutting things like oatmeal, rice, potatoes, and bread, period. Okay, we as black women, we love us some carbs, but we, we can't have it. I know, Brittany, I already know you got to cut, you have to cut that oatmeal down. You're going to have to add something with that oatmeal. That is one thing that I know a lot of people do. First thing in the morning, they eat oatmeal and they eat um, fruit, but they don't pair any protein with it. Oatmeal is a carb. Fruit is a carb. You got to pair protein with it. Um, I do the uh, brown organic eggs. I do brown organic eggs. Let me see. What about apples and oranges? Yes. Apples and oranges are good. Yes. Apples and oranges are good. Okay, I think I had a question over here. Yes, I am taking new clients, okay? Um, for those of you all who are in Jackson, you need a new gym home because, like, listen, them big gyms are going to be a thing of the past. People are going to want to be in smaller, exclusive, studio-style gyms because they know that, one, it ain't going to be a whole bunch of people in there, and, two, it's going to be clean. We have um, sanitized our gym completely. We do it all the time anyway. But we are accepting new um, members. We only $20 a month. Okay, we are practicing social distancing. Like I said, we clean two and three times a day. My manager is very good about cleaning. And I am accepting new clients. So if you're interested in training, DM me and I can get you started with the training. I keep saying something about applesauce. I would stay away from, um, I, would, I would definitely stay away from applesauce, y'all. Because mangoes, yes, fine. But applesauce, I wouldn't do it. If you want to make your own applesauce, I would suggest making your own applesauce if if I were you. Just like with, um, if we're talking about granola, if we're talking about um, trail mix, I would make my own when it comes to things like that, okay? But apples are fine. We talked about snacks on yesterday that you all can do. So, like, if you have a sweet tooth like I do, you can take some of the green apples and slice them. Drizzle them with some honey, put some cinnamon on top, maybe even crumble up some type of nuts and then put it in the oven and bake it when it comes out. Now you think you're eating apple pie. So you have to trick your brain. You know, every now and then I'll even have some non-dairy ice cream, okay? And like I said before, even though I'm vegan, there are certain things that I do eat that might have eggs in it. So sometimes I go back and forth between vegan and vegetarian because... Vegan is like very, very hard on a whole nother level because you really have to watch like the pastas you eat and you've got to watch the different types of sauces. Everything has got to be vegan, okay, down to, and it's very, very difficult to do that in Mississippi. So sometimes I go back and forth between vegan and vegetarian, but I don't eat meat. That's period, okay, but some of the stuff might not be considered vegan, something in it, eggs or what may have you. But again... Those are some good snacks, okay? But like I said, I would stay away from things that come pre-packaged. Applesauce comes pre-packaged. Things that come in a box are going to be packed with sugar. Things that come with in a can are going to be packed with sodium. And you want to stay away from things that are on the shelf. If they're on the shelf, okay, they've added something to it to make it last. And those things I do not want in my body. I do a lot of fresh stuff. Like now that I've had time to cook, y'all, I cook a lot of fresh vegetables, zucchini, squash. My father-in-law, he's got a, a garden. Husband be bringing home kale and all kind of lettuce. And we've got beets and we've got carrots and everything, y'all. The time is now for us to get back to cooking from the earth, okay? The, the time is now because all that canned stuff, all that processed stuff that we put in our bodies is not healthy. And then we end up with these underlying conditions and then bam, something like this happens and we're like, oh my God, I've got diabetes, I've got cholesterol, high blood pressure, things of that nature. So we got to get back to cooking things from the earth. So I 
I operate on that mentality. Like we are kings and queens and I'm going to eat like I'm a king. I mean, a queen. And I need you all to eat like you're a queen or a king. Got it? Okay. So we're not going to buy things that are on the shelf. We're not going to buy canned goods. We're going to buy our vegetables fresh. You should be buying vegetables at least twice a week. Okay. Because the fresh vegetables, those things, you've got all your nutrients, you don't have all your sodium, then you know how that you've seasoned it. So with my fresh vegetables, I um, wash them, I chop them in half, you know, cut them in little squares. I might toss them with a little olive oil. The only seasoning I put on my vegetables, truly y'all, is a little bit of sea salt. I don't season my vegetables that much because the vegetables taste good as they are. So I do a little bit of sea salt and I either saute it with some vegan butter or I might put it in the oven. Okay, so we got to get back to eating from the earth. Like, seriously, guys, when you all come to our restaurant, Mind, Body, and Soul Foods, everything is going to be fresh. It's going to be coming from the Garden of Eden. Everything is going to be, um, all of our stuff will be made for anybody. So whatever type of diet you have, if you have an allergy for nuts, if you are vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, you will be able to eat at Mind, Body, and Soul Foods, okay? Because the butters we use, the gravy we use, all of that type of stuff is going to be vegan. We're going to have the meatless burgers. We're going to have the chicken, the salmon, the tofu. We're going to have turkey, everything. So whatever you eat, you will be able to eat at Mind, Body, and Soul Food. And then not only will you be able to eat there, but you'll be able to get it prepped for the week, okay? So you can either get, you know, five meals, 10, 15, or 20 and get your whole food um, family food prep for the entire week. So we will be open soon. We got the sign up and we are almost done. I can see the light. Can you name vegan brand ice cream you love? So the, um, Ben and Jerry's, it's not vegan, but it's non-dairy. I do. Ben and Jerry's finally came out with some non-dairy ice cream. Ooh, but listen, y'all, let me tell you, if you're not as disciplined as I am, I'm disciplined enough to buy a pint Okay, of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I may take two or three scoop, like a, a spoon, not a scooper, but just a spoon. And then that may be the only ice cream I eat once a week. Okay, we've got three pints of different ice creams in the freezer, but we just take one or two t uh, tablespoons out of it and put it back in the refrigerator because I know if I'm sitting there eating it straight out the container, I'm going to eat it all. So I might do about two tablespoons of ice cream once every five or six days, okay? So if you are not that disciplined where you're going to, you know, eat a little bit of the ice cream and then put it away, I just say don't buy it, okay? Like, out of sight, out of mind, okay? Um, there's also another one. Oh, it's another ice cream, too. It's in a white and black container. I can't think of the name of it, but it's made from, like, cashew milk, and it's good. Husband likes that one. But, again, if you're not as disciplined as us to just take a, t a tablespoon or two out and put the rest in the freezer, just don't buy it. What about weight gain? Still pair card with protein. Yeah. Okay, yes. If you're trying to gain weight, okay, you need to chewy. This right here is going to help you gain weight. Um, you still need to do your protein with your carbs, okay? But you just need to up your calories. So instead of doing four ounces, you need to do six ounces of food. If you're trying to lose weight, most of the time I have me and my clients on about four ounces, no more than that, because four ounces, and then you've got a half a cup of vegetables, a cup of vegetables, the size of your fist, the palm of your hand, okay? Then that's all you need for your meals, we tend to just put too much on our plate. But if you're trying to gain weight, you still want to measure it out, okay? You want to do about, like I said, six ounces of food. My husband does six eggs. If you're trying to gain weight, you need to be doing anywhere between four to six eggs. Those are things that you have to build yourself up to. Most people who are trying to gain weight, the frustration in it is that they got to eat so much more food. You have to work yourself up to that. So when I get off of a competition and it's time for me to start gaining weight, I have to slowly add the calories and the carbs back in. You don't just wake up one morning and be like, okay, I'm going to eat six eggs and a whole bowl of oatmeal and then I'm going to eat, you know, 2,000, 2,500 calories. Like, it doesn't work that way. So the same way when you're losing weight, you have to taper things off. When you're gaining weight, you have to add it on slowly. So... You take your time, if you're doing four ounces of food and you're trying to gain weight, then take it up to five, then take it up to six. Like, it's a process. You've got to take baby steps. You just can't jump out there, 
okay? So if you're trying to put on 10 more pounds, then you need to just slowly up your calories, okay? So every couple of days, slowly up your calories. and But make sure that you're not gaining fat. So you want to make sure that you're still eating like your salmon. You can do your grass-fed beef. Um, you can do, um, you know, protein shakes that with the, like I said, the Tachui is a good one that we have for weight gain. If you all have not seen the pictures, look up some of the transformations. A lot of people are putting on some good, healthy weight with this Tachui. This is um, algae, y'all. Like, you could live off of algae and water for, like, 30 days. Like, seriously. So, Tachui is, like, a really good one for a weight gainer because a lot of people struggle with gaining weight and then they're eating all the wrong things so they're gaining actual fat you want to do it the right way so that you can gain lean muscle so i still eat the same thing in the off season that i ate during season i just eat more of it okay so instead of me eating maybe like one fourth cup of oatmeal i might be eating a half a cup or, you know, three-fourths of a cup of oatmeal. I might be eating, like I said, I'm still, I was still, this is back when I was eating meat. I would still be eating my salmon and my grass-fed beef or my steak, top sirloin. Now, when husband's gaining weight, we do the ribeye. Ribeye is more fattier than the top sirloin. Top sirloin, we do that when we're trying to cut down. So, you just got to kind of know the foods that are going to help you to gain weight. Know your body. You got to learn your body. Um, learn what works for you, but just slowly take those calories up if you're trying to gain weight. A good post-workout snack would be a pack of tuna or a protein shake. Um, for me, after my workout, it's easier for me to do a protein shake. It's just, you know, my you want to do, we talked about this yesterday, within 30 minutes to an hour of you working out, you want to make sure that you are um, putting in something because you've broken all those nutrients down, you've tore those muscles down, and your body is open to receive the proper nutrients right after your workout. So make sure that within 30 minutes to an hour after your workout, you're putting in those proper nutrients. Something good and easy because a lot of people don't feel like, you know, eating a heavy meal after they work out, like I said, would be a pack of tuna um, and uh, or a protein shake is my go-to a pack of chicken something like that some chicken tenderloins and some broccoli i used to do that back in the day it's something small just so that you can make sure that you're putting in what you need after your workout okay because your body's gonna be open to receive it um okay so i answered that question let me come down here y'all talking about the restaurant you eat a whole oh mm -mm, no put that ice cream away Besides squatting, do you recommend incorporating to chewy to gain glutes and lip? Yes. Def if you're trying to gain weight, though, if you're not trying to gain weight, don't incorporate to chewy. But yeah, um, squats, if you're trying to work on your glutes, donkey kickbacks are a good one. Um, definitely squats and donkey kickbacks. Those are the two main ones that I do for my glutes. What is the best protein shake? The best protein shake is the Matrix. Of course, I'm going to say that because... That's with my company. I think I may have left mine in the car. I got all the products behind me. But the Matrix is 100 dollars And so y'all know I used to be, you know, with other companies in the past. But now that I have gotten with Total Life Changes, I love all of our products. I love the Matrix because it's got the Cassis in it. And so that gives me the energy I need. Um, I love the consistency. Like I said, I mix it with the... Um, cashew milk or almond milk and then i add my strawberries i add my resolution drops you can add whatever you want to to your smoothie you can add i add my greens and all of that to my smoothie or whatever i even add nutriburst to the smoothie so matrix hands down is my favorite okay um y'all see this skin glowing because i started you know really taking care of the things that i was putting in my body and detoxing um yeah them donkey kickbacks are a killer um, hip muscles, those hip raises and fire hydrants will be good for those hip muscles. Also, if you lay to the side and do those lateral leg lifts. Um, so almonds are good, but those cran raisins are going to get you in trouble, sis. Them cran raisins are packed with a lot of sugar. That's what I was telling my coach about. I was like, listen, y'all, we get those trail mixes and they got the cashews, the almond, the cran raisins. And y'all put the cran raisins on y'all salad and stuff. Those cran raisins going to get you in trouble. Turn on the back and see how much sugar is just in those cran raisins. It's a lot of sugar. So I would definitely, definitely, definitely stay away from raisins. Stay away from cran raisins. 
make your own little trio mix, make your own um, granola, you know, get your nuts and stuff like that, crumble them up. You can get some honey, some almond butter, put them in the oven and bake it, okay? Um, You love duck kickbacks, but you hate them. Yep, it's a love-hate relationship. You want to lose weight, what foods do you recommend? So, um, the uh, rules that I give my clients, it's just rules to stick by when it comes to losing weight. Like I said before, you got to know your body because everybody's body is different. One person, salmon might, might work best for them losing weight. One person, cod, um, might work best for them. This person here, shrimp, might work best. I got some clients, chicken works best, ground turkey works best. So, you got to know your body. So, that's why I tell people to stick. Find two meats that you like, stick with them for about two to three weeks and see how your body reacts to those. That's what we do in bodybuilding, okay? We take about two, three weeks doing the same meal plan. See, a lot of people, the reason why you can't find out what works for your body is because you'll do it for two, three days and then you stop it. You got to do it consistently for like two, three weeks so that your body can get acclimated to it and you know, okay, my body bloats with ground turkey or the chicken makes me bloat, but salmon, you know, my body leans out. I know for a fact that cod leans me out. I can't stand cod, okay? I just do not. But I know that cod is going to help to lean my body out. So when I was in competition, whenever I wanted to get lean, I started eating cod. And just like that, I started to lose weight. So that's the first thing is that you got to learn your body and know what works for you. Same thing when it comes to vegetables. Broccoli bloats me, okay? Broccoli does not do good for me. But for some people, broccoli works best for them. For me... I do now zucchini and squash mixture, okay? Some people do asparagus. Asparagus leans certain people out. Um, so you just got to know what green vegetables work for you as well, okay? But the first rule I always tell my clients is never skip a meal, all right? And absolutely no bread. Uh, like I said, if you have a bread obsession, get you some Ezekiel bread. The thing about Ezekiel bread with not just it being flourless is that it's got to go in the freezer. So with... Um, the bread going in the freezer is out of sight, out of mind. So you know you got bread. You can eat it when the you you know when you have a craving for it, but it's not sitting on the counter. If you got bread sitting on the counter, you're gonna eat it. It's just that simple. Okay. The next rule is um, for you to uh, eat every two to three hours. Okay. We talked about that. If you are one of those people that cannot remember to eat, set those alarms on your phone. I got alarms set all throughout the day because I might get busy. And then it's like, oh, crap, four or five hours has gone back and I have not eaten. So set those alarms on your phone of when to eat your meals, okay? So within 30 minutes of waking up, you should be eating a meal. If you're one of those people that don't like to eat before a certain time, which I used to be, I thought breakfast was a scam, okay? But breakfast is definitely the most important meal of the day. And eating it within 30 minutes of waking up is going to speed up your metabolism because your body has been starving for like eight, 10 hours throughout the nighttime. So you want to make sure that you are eating within 30 minutes of waking up. So I started doing protein shakes within in the morning because I didn't like eating a meal before 11 o'clock. So I do a protein shake first thing in the morning and then two to three hours later, I eat a meal. And then two to three hours later, I eat lunch. Two to three hours later, afternoon snack. Two to three hours later, dinner. Okay, so set those alarms on your phone. The next rule is for, um, we'll get to carbs. The next um, rule is water, um, drinking 80 to 100 ounces of water, okay? You're supposed to be drinking half of your body weight. So some of you are, especially those of you are that are 200 pounds or more, you should already be drinking 100 ounces of water. We already talked about the properties of water. Water is going to act as a natural detox, give you energy, flush you out, make your skin pretty, okay? Stay away from things like... Um, naked juices, stay away from those like V8s and stuff like that, packed with a lot of um, sugar. You must have just joined because I've already, I've said matrix like three times as far as the protein shake. You must just join the video. Um, water is one of those things. You can add stuff to it, lemon, lime, mint leaves, things of that nature. Okay. Um, like I said, V8, um, naked juices, packed with a lot of sugar. Alcohol, if you're going to do it, like I tell my clients, do it um, straight, okay, o over ice. Add you some lemon, some lime to it. But when we start doing margaritas, when we start doing um, when we start doing beers and stuff like that, you got a lot of uh, sugar and carbs, okay? So a lot of people wonder why they can't lose weight, but they drink wine every single night. That is why you can't lose weight. You're drinking wine every night, okay? I used to drink sangria every night. Turn on the back, see how much sugar is in there, okay? 
you drinking margaritas all the time. You're drinking beer and you're wondering why your belly can't go down. Okay? So, stay away from it. Like, just do it, like I said, in moderation. Do it straight so you don't have all those extra calories. Okay? The next rule is, if it's white, it ain't right. So, that goes for salt, pure sugar, rice, potatoes, sour cream, ranch, blue cheese. Stay away from it. Okay? It's going to be fattening. All right? Cheese is, is molded anyway. Okay? The process that cheese has to go through to be cheese, if you knew that, and the things that would be going on within your body, you'd probably put that cheese down. But I'm not going to go there today. Y'all do y'all research on cheese. But salt, okay? Um, stay away from pure white salt. Like I said, you can do... I do like sea salt sometimes. But the seasonings that I use on my food have enough flavor in them that I do not have to add salt. When you come to Mind, Body, and Soul Foods to eat, there will be no salt shakers on the table. Because you're not going to have to... Take out the salt, because I know how y'all do in Mississippi, okay? We get our food, and we start seasoning before we even taste it. We're not going to do that. So when you come to Mind, Body, and Soul Foods, there's going to be no salt shakers on the table. So don't look for them. It might be some hot sauce, because that's just a thing of the South, and I love hot sauce. I keep it in my bag, swag. Okay, anyway, but we're not going to have salt on the table. Stop <laughs> seasoning the food before you even taste it. Okay, get you some seasonings that fully season your food where you don't need salt. So I use Badia, I use black pepper, I use um, garlic uh, pepper, I use the ranch seasoning, that's a good one. I know we talked about why it ain't right, I'm talking about the ranch for your dressing. But the ranch seasoning, I do use that. Um, I find different seasonings, like I might find a jerk seasoning for my chicken, but I like the Flavor of God seasoning. Y'all can get that off of Amazon. Flavor of God is really good. But I season my food with stuff that makes it flavorful where I don't need all that extra sodium, okay? So, again, canned goods, a lot of sodium. Get your vegetables fresh or get the steam bag. Same thing for your meats. Stay away from those ready-made dinners, lean cuisine, uh, Bertoli, all that type of stuff is going to be packed with a lot of sodium, okay? Preservatives. Um sugar do a sugar substitute so i do honey local honey i used to have to take allergy shots y'all every single week twice a week okay for 10 years but then i started doing things like local honey because the bees in the area okay they um when they put it in the honey all right they have properties in there that help you to help your immune system to build up so that you won't have to worry about those seasonal allergies. So that's why you want to get it local. So I make sure that I go to like the Whole Foods in the area or we have like a, a marketplace um, near my house. And I go there and get local honey. And you read it and it'll say made in such and such county or made. And then you know that it was local. So then when it's time for those seasonal allergies, I don't have them like everybody else. Because I used to be like bed bound some days because my allergies would be so bad until like, once I started the allergy shots then I had to be dependent upon shots every you know twice a week so local honey guys that is a sweetener helps with your like I said allergies things of that nature your sinuses um you can do stevia turbinata agave um cinnamon is a sweetener as well as a natural fat burner so I put I put cinnamon on everything my oatmeal, I put it in smoothies, I put it in um, on my sweet potatoes, so cinnamon is a good one. The next rule is to use fresh meats and vegetables. We talked about that one already, okay? I cannot stress how the fresh meats and vegetables would do for your body, okay? Um, because like me and husband was talking about, it was not so much as in the meat where, because of course I cut out meat and that's why a lot of things that I had going on have cleared up, but it's not so much in just the meat. Okay. It's in the way that the meat is being prepared. Now it's in what they're doing to the animals before they, you know, do the process that they have to do to get it in the stores and on your plate. Okay. So that's why you really have to be conscious of knowing, you know, your meat and where it's coming from and how you cook it and all of that type of stuff, or whatever. Just be aware of what you put in your body. Okay. And then the last rule is to always pair a protein with a carb. Okay. Carbs, vegetables are carbs. Fruit is carbs. Then you got your complex carbs like oatmeal, rice, and potatoes. So when we talk about um, staying away from 
complex carbs, those are the things that we're talking about. So when I have a client that comes to me and they want to lose anywhere between 20 and 100 pounds, I always start by cutting out the processed sugars and cutting out the complex carbs, okay? And like I said, we inch them off, but things like, you know, fast food and sugars, cakes, pies, anything on a shelf, okay? Um, my clients, they become label readers so that they know what's in the stuff because I have a lot of people come to me, well, that said that it had X amount of protein. You know, my manager, she was eating some little protein bites. And I, I see a lot of people eating these little things that's got the cheese and the pretzels and everything else. And you think because the package said protein, but then when you look at cheese, is dairy. You're not going to lose weight. And then it's got like ham in it. And then those little bites that she was eating was pork, okay? And so then you're wondering why you're not losing weight. Because just because the package said protein, packed with protein, does not mean that it's good for you, okay? So a lot of people end up snacking on all these things and you're like, well, I don't know why I'm not losing weight. And then I look at what you've been eating. You've been eating breakfast bars and them little protein packs with the ham and the cheese and the pretzels in it and you've been eating trail mix and you've been eating nature valley bars and all kinds of stuff and that is the reason why you're not losing weight okay if you there's something that you want to make get on pinterest and make it yourself you want to make your own granola okay want to make your own snacks like i said get you some fruit put some honey on it crunch up some um nuts pop it in the oven and then now you got you a little dessert okay so if you got a sweet tooth um, we are G.I. Jane Studio X. We are uh, right in front of North Park Mall, 201 Ring Road, Ridgeland, Mississippi. Um, right off of Caroline Road. Like I said, we are accepting clients now. We are accepting members. We are open and ready. Y'all come ye all to the storehouse. Like, for real. I need the line to be wrapped around the building because I hope that one thing you all learn from this pandemic is that you need to be working out and eating right and getting rid of these pre-existing conditions, especially my people here in Mississippi. So that is the reason why um, we are right in front. The address is 201 Ring Road. Just send me a DM and I will shoot you all the information you need as far as the address and the phone number. And um, you can come join us. Like I said, um, we are... We are ready to service, serve our community, okay, at Mind, Body, and Soul Foods. I am excited for you all to come and for you to sit and eat, like I said, the different types of foods that we're going to have at the restaurant um, is amazing. I mean, the play on the words, I don't know if you all seen the sign, the poster that I um, posted or whatever, but yes, we'll be open on Monday. The sign, um, Mind, Body, and Soul Food, y'all. The um, fork and the knife, making the Y. And then the Y on the body is actually the tree of life, okay? Um, because when you come to Mind, Body, and Soul Foods, you're going to get that knowledge of self. You're going to get that knowledge of nutrition because, it, you know, I don't want you all to be dependent upon me. You shouldn't want to be dependent upon somebody as far as what you should eat, what you should be doing. You should want to soak up all the knowledge. That's why I always tell my people to do your research. I'm going to give you knowledge, but I want you all to do your research. That's how my coach trained me. Seek to show thyself. So you want to make sure you're doing your own research, you know, um, and becoming a label reader. Because like I said, we'll look at stuff and we'll be like, oh, well, this got a lot of protein in it. And so I thought it was good. And then you look at it and it's like, look how much sodium is in that. Look how much fat is in that. No. So you want to become a labor reader. So we're going to have cooking classes at Mind, Body, and Soul Food. We're going to have book readings where we're going to sit and cipher through different books. That's why I said we're going to have knowledge of self. And so that's what the why in the body represents is um, the tree of life. And then... Um, so, if you all seen the O in soul, it's the all seeing eye. So, at Mind, Body, and Soul Food, we're going to teach you how to open up that third eye. And so that you would no longer be deaf, dumb, and blind. I can no longer allow my people in Mississippi to be deaf, dumb, and blind. We are number one for childhood obesity, hypertension. It's got to stop. It's got to end, y'all. I'm tired of seeing my people die early from different 
um, pre-existing conditions. We have the power to heal ourselves. Our ancestors were doing it. They were getting things from the earth and they were mixing up different concoctions and they were healing themselves. We have the ability to do that. So in Mind, Body, and Soul Foods, we're going to teach you how to open up that third eye and have knowledge of self, how to seek, how to, like I said, no longer be deaf, dumb, and blind. And then foods, the O, the double O in foods is the infinity sign. Okay. So, y'all, it's it's just, it's so much more that you all will learn as you come to Mind, Body, and Soul Foods. You're going to feel like you have come into my home. I have, I'm going to have it set up where it feels like a home from the chandelier to the farmhouse table that is, you know, going to be the shelf table. And like I said, we're going to have salmon and we're going to have turkey. And so when you see the name, you think, okay... The name of the restaurant is Mind, Body, and Soul Foods. So the reason why I did that is because, you know, it's Mississippi. So if you think so many people that I have pitched that name to since we, you know, got started, they was like, oh, my God, a soul food place where we're going to be able to get our stuff already prepped. And I was just like, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. They think they come in to get grains and cornbread. You're going to get some grains and cornbread, but they're going to be healthy greens and cornbread so we are going to have you know some different soul foods on the menu we've got some vegan cornbread we've got vegan mac and cheese we've got your um turkey meatloaf we've got our vegan gravy and so man it's it's going to be amazing we've got your tofu for your vegans like me you know all of the things on the menu are labeled king and queen you know meals that are queen are tailored for you know, me and my tribe and uh, meals that are Taylor King are um, tailored for a husband and his tribe. So it's just so much meaning that goes into this place. It's going to be, you know, I had almost allowed somebody to trick me out of my spot, you know, not just somebody, but I feel like, okay, you know, in Mississippi, I was like, somebody had already created a lounge and I was like, you know, well, somebody's already done that, and I guess I can't do that now and because we already got a lounge. And so God was like, what What does that mean? Like, we can have multiple, you know, because when it comes to Mississippi, it's like, you know, we t have a tendency to be crab in a bucket or we have a tendency to not want to support our own, especially supporting small black businesses. So I was like, I, I don't know. So I put it out there in the universe, and the opportunity presented itself, and Willie gave me the opportunity again, two doors down from G.I. Jane Studio X, to be able to open up Mind, Body, and Soul Foods. And, you know, I'm going to have my whole lounging area that I wanted. I always wanted a place where people could come, you know, after five and just be vibing with each other and network and things of that nature. And so that was always my dream. So now you all will be able to come and vibe and, you know, I have my whole little lounging area. We're going to be at a network and we're going to talk CBD and I'm going to put y'all on game with CBD because y'all need to know that CBD is getting ready to be a billion, multi-billion dollar industry, y'all. My husband was looking up some things about CBD and um, just all the properties that it has for, you know, fighting against viruses and bacteria and things of that nature. I mean, y'all already see what CBD did for the kid and her hair. Like, I have to shave constantly now because I have a full head of hair. I still have some spots that's not growing in, but y'all, alopecia could not stand a chance against CBD, you know. And um, I'm just so grateful for me finding out about CBD last year before I even found about the company, you know. And then just putting the proper nutrients in our bodies. I know y'all tired of seeing Nutriverse, but don't nobody care. Because Nutriverse, y'all, Nutriverse is the stuff. I don't like taking a bunch of vitamins. And, you know, when I get off a of stage, my coach has me taking a thousand different vitamins. Them vitamins still in the cabinet. Who finna do all that? Most people, most of you all go to GNC. You buy up all these pills because they told you this was good for that. That was good for that. You got you didn't spend two, three hundred dollars at GNC. And where is that stuff now? Still in your cabinet from two, three years ago. So when I found out about the Nutriburst, I'm like, everything that I need is in the Nutriburst. Okay. 72 minerals, 22 phytonutrients, whole food greens, herbs, everything you need is found in a Nutriburst. And then I don't have to wait until after I eat. I just get up in the morning, go into my refrigerator, take a shot of my Nutriburst, and I'm headed out the door. And my daughter gets to take Nutriburst. And my husband gets to take Nutriburst. The whole family. See, my daughter was taking one type of vitamin from one company that I used to be with. I was taking one type of vitamin. Husband was taking one. That was just too much. I got to remember to give her her vitamins. Remember to... 
Now, we all take the same thing. Same thing. We all take Nutriverse. We all take Chaga. Period. Period. You just, okay. Yes, to truly helps you to gain weight. So, you know, those are things that we are going to sit and learn at Mind, Body, and Soul Food, y'all. Y'all going to be real, real tired of me talking about Nutriverse, talking about Chaga, okay? Talking about CBD. Y'all going to be tired because we're going to be talking about it all the time because my people need to know that this stuff is amazing. I've got so many people that take my gummies, my CBD gummies, y'all. Kids. I have one lady from Crystal Springs. Her son, you know, ADD, and they started taking my gummies. And next thing you know, he's calm. They were giving it to him before he went to school. Um, I can't go without my, my CBD gummies. I'm serious. So instead of us allowing these people to trick us out our spot and to keep us deaf, dumb, and blind, got our kids taking all this medicine, we got to do our research. And so that's why I was so glad that I found out about CBD. And I just invested in all of it. I use CBD on my face. I use CBD everywhere okay and y'all y'all can just take that for how you want it but i use cbd everywhere okay and cbd helps with everything it's correcting bodily functions it's putting your body in homeostasis so that your body can do what it's naturally supposed to do we were not meant to take all this medicine our kids were not meant to be on this medicine how many times did y'all hear when we was growing up talking about some that um you know how many times did y'all hear back then that somebody had ADD. Really? Like, when they start diagnosing us and our kids with all of this stuff, like, they we was running outside and running off all this energy, but now the things that's, that they're putting in this food, that we're not reading the label, and all of the medicines, and just our kids are sitting behind video games all day and things of that nature. So, you know, now all of a sudden, all of our kids got ADD. I, every time I run into somebody, they talk about their child got ADD, their child got this, their child on this medicine. Or I'm running into somebody, they're having to take Ambien to go to sleep. They're having to take Adderall, and they're taking this, and they're taking that. You see what I'm saying? But I used to have to take all types of stuff to go to sleep. I don't take all this stuff to go to sleep now, y'all. I don't. I I take CBD, and I go to sleep, and I sleep through the night because... And hold on, I'm, I'm going to go back live over here on Instagram. You know, y'all know Instagram be, be hating. Instagram be hating. I guess my video had ran long enough and um, it cut me off. So I'm going to go back live over here on Instagram. But um, I don't know if you all are like me. Hold on. I'm trying to find a good picture. They be doing the most. You know, now with Instagram, when you go live and they save it, it saves as a uh, as an Instagram TV. <laughs> now nah, we didn't lose it again. Hold on. Nutrition Talk is what I'm going to name it. Y'all don't go nowhere. Hold on. See, that's what I like about Facebook. We don't have to worry about Facebook cutting us off. We don't have to worry about Facebook cutting us off. All right, let me go back live on Instagram, y'all. Okay. All right, cool. Um... So, we'll let them come back in. And I'm going to tell y'all about my sleep patterns. Y'all got some questions? Come on back in, y'all. We didn't lose the video this time, thank God. It allowed me to save it. It just cut me off, though, but it, it did let me save it. I might have hit my, my hour on Instagram. Thank God that Facebook does not cut you off like that. But we might have reached our hour. But anyway, it did allow me to save it, so no worries. But I was talking about 
my sleep patterns, y'all, and how I started to take CBD in order for me to go to sleep, okay? Um, I am an entrepreneur, so my mind is always up and running, you know? I'm always just thinking of the next plan, you know? The restaurant is done, and now I'm thinking about, okay, what I got to do next, what I got to do with this, what I got to do. So I be up thinking of a master plan, don't want to go to sleep. So with the CBD... I was able to start taking it at nighttime and being able to sleep throughout the night. I remember the first time that I took the CBD tea, y'all. This is why I was so. And see, I didn't. I just jumped straight in because I had already known about CBD. Some of y'all be asking too many dollar questions, allowing the enemy to trick you out your spot. And then you got people that's telling you that um, it's a scam or you got people telling you that this, that, and the third or whatever. And so you got people telling you, you know, uh, this, that, and the third about the products. And so you're just kind of like, oh, I'm not going to try it. I wasn't that way. My coach called me. She told me that she had uh, CBD detox tea, and that's all I needed to know. Okay. So the CBD detox tea, um, I was like, okay. I, I took it that first night, y'all. And when I woke up the next morning to go to the bathroom, I was not cramping. I was able to sleep throughout the night, y'all. Um, it was just, it was amazing. I didn't, that was the first time that I did not get up in the middle of the night. Cause normally I'm up in the middle of the night and, you know, just up thinking if one thing wakes me up, I can't go back to sleep. But once I started taking the CBD tea in the beginning, I was able to sleep throughout the entire night. So I do that. I take the harmony drops before bed. These are our CBD drops. So a lot of people give this, like I said, your kids, like, Get them kids off of that medicine, ADD and all this other stuff that they are diagnosing our kids with. Wean them off of this medicine. My people have, um, even my people who have anxiety and depression, I have people who have gone through um, PTSD, postpartum and stuff like that. And they um, do the gummies. They do the harmony drops. Um, they do just all things CBD. They do the smokables. The smokables are my biggest ones. Everybody loves the smokables because they get into your system faster and calms you down. So a lot of my people who were on medication for um, different types of depression, um, like I said, if they were in counseling or whatever else, they were able to wean themselves off of that medicine and start to do the CBD pre-rolls the harmony drops or the gummies or something like that. So whatever floats your boat. But um, I will say, like I said, I'm so glad that I found out about CBD because it has really um, helped me to get out of my own head, for me to calm down, for me to go to sleep. I have bad migraines, okay? And so when I have a migraine coming on, take a couple drops of the harmony drops, um, eat a gummy or something. I might do the smokables because like I said, the smokables get into your system faster. But I do CBD now. I used to have to take two bc powders with a coke plus do four ibuprofens and then lay in a dark room with the air condition blasting that was the only way for me to get rid of my headaches because i've been dealing with migraines since i was 16 years old but then when i started to do the cbd i even rubbed the alleviate cream on my temples okay um if you got um I think it's high blood pressure i would not rub this on your scalp or anything like that but um for those of you that don't I rub this on my scalp when I have a migraine. Well, on my temples, I'm sorry. When I have a migraine, I also rub it on my scalp um, right after I shave my head or something like that. And this helps to open up the pores, okay? So I rub that on my scalp and that stimulates my follicles so that I can have all of that hair growth that y'all see. I also use the infinity oil as well. So that's where y'all see that glow from because I have dry skin. I've got eczema. So I'll use the Infinity Oil as a moisturizer. Like I've got some eczema happening right here, but I put, you know, the Infinity Oil on it and it helps. So like I said, um, same thing even for the how many drops as far as like headache. Um, if you've got, you know, menstrual pain or something like that, you know, bad cramps during your cycle, the Harmony Drops are good just for any type of pain, stress, and anxiety. All things CBD is going to help with that because, like I said, it's going to put your body in homeostasis and help it to correct itself. So, yeah, that's my nutrition talk. If y'all don't have no more questions, I just want to come on here and have um, a nutrition talk with y'all because I know a lot of people don't know what to eat. They're working out. You all are working out with me. 
every morning, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. And you're wondering why. But nutrition is 70%, y'all. So, um, like I said, get you a coach. Get you a trainer. I do online training. For those people that are in Jackson, I am accepting new, con new clients and new um, members. So, get you a trainer. I, myself, have a trainer. So, even though I am, a, you know, a professional bodybuilder, I still have a coach, a trainer. Okay, everybody needs a coach. Jordan hit a coach. Like, you cannot fully be great unless you have, you know, somebody who is a expert in that field. So, I am still learning and growing. I'm only 31. So, I have a coach who I'm learning and growing from. And then I get up under nutritionist so I can learn and grow from them and be able to help my people to eat the right things. Because nutrition is, is constantly changing. Things are constantly changing. The way that people are growing these plants and you know animals and stuff like that is constantly changing so you have to stay up on your education it's just like with any profession after every so couple of years you got to go back for training so that you can stay you know on top um with your nutrition stay on top with the times basically and cbd is with the times it's you know the newest thing that we're finding out about it's not regulated so the time now to get in is now okay because like i said it's gonna be a billion dollar industry but the CBD has so many properties where it can correct you. You're not going to get high. It's not psychoactive like THC, okay? So you don't have to be scared about failing drug tests or things of that nature. But you want to just stay up to date on what's current, what's going on, what things can help you, okay? And so that's why I have a coach so that I can stay up to date on everything that's going on. And so because I have so many people that I have to tend to. I have a coach so that all I have to do is say, okay, what you need me to do? Cool. Got it. I don't have to worry about myself because my coach does that. And then I have the people that I worry about. So the main thing is for you to educate yourself, get you a coach, a trainer so that you can know what to do. Stop trying to do things on your own. Like I got it. I'm going to Google it. And then you could have paid somebody to help you along the way instead of trying to Google it. And then two years from now, you know, I get those calls. I've been watching you for two years and I've tried to do it on my own. I can't. Now I'm ready. And I know you got to have your mind right. But I'm just saying, save your time and all of that stress and go ahead and just pay for you a coach or a trainer. Okay, awesome. I will definitely check out your page, honey. So, yes, that is it. That's all I want. I just want to come on here and talk to you all about nutrition. I got to hop on a call. So, I hope y'all continue to have a great Saturday. It's raining here, so I'm going to be relaxing. So, I will see you all later. I hope this was some great information. I am going to save this live and upload it to my YouTube page. So, subscribe to my YouTube page. All of the workouts from the last month and a half are uploaded. Different types of videos like this are uploaded. So subscribe and share so that you can go back and watch these things so that you can go back and join in on the workouts. So I will see you all back at on Monday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time so we can work out together. All right. So much love. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. Thank you for the love. Peace.